there are so many different kinds of proteins that you could be taking, right? Like we've got different protein powders, we've got different meat sources, veggie sources. The reality is they all have their application to some degree, but I wanna help you get a solid understanding of when you should be using each particular one. So I'm gonna break down whey proteins, I'm gonna break down pea proteins, I'm gonna break down collagens, I'm gonna break down beef proteins, talk about casein proteins, I'm gonna talk about all of them, the pros, the cons, and where you could be applying them into your daily life or into your workout regime to get the best outcome possible. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the ultimate protein science guide. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. We got new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. But honestly, stay by your phone and computer because we post videos just about every single day. Also want to make sure you hit subscribe, but also turn on that little bell button. That way you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live or post a new video. So without further ado, let's talk about some protein. All right, so let's go ahead and start with whey protein first, simply because whey protein is the most popular and it's probably the one that you've heard of the most. So let's go ahead and let's dive in the good, the bad, and the ugly. But first off, what is whey? Okay, whey is simply when you take milk and you push that liquid portion through a filter, you're ultimately left with proteins and some byproducts. Okay, this is then dried and that becomes your whey protein. The issue with whey protein is you've got a couple of different kinds. The first one is just the purely unadulterated kind that's pushed through that filter and you're left with what's called whey protein concentrate. Most whey products on the market are going to be whey protein concentrate, which means they're going to have protein, but they're also going to have milk solids that are going to be like your proteins and your carbs and your fats that are in there. So you've got a plethora of different things, good, bad, and ugly. You're usually looking like 70-ish, 80-ish percent protein, the rest just kind of junk. Now, the issue with that is you're left with a lot of milk solids, okay? The milk solids have a lot of components that aren't doing you any good, okay? Really just inflammatory components and milk sugars that aren't good for you in the first place. So try to just get whey protein concentrate out of the equation anyway. It's pretty inexpensive and it's kind of garbage. Okay, the next step is whey protein isolate, which is taking that same whey protein concentrate, but it's isolating the protein from that. So it's more like 90 to 95% protein, with much less lactose in it. So you're looking at much purer protein. That being said, the issue with whey, the issue with any kind of dairy protein is that we still have sort of a lock and key, like sort of genetic connection that doesn't really work, right? We have to remember no matter who you are, and I'm not anti-dairy by any means, okay? But you have to remember that this is a protein that was designed to grow something that wasn't a human. So there's a little bit of a genetic disconnect, okay? So there's a little bit of sort of this like doesn't quite fit. So what happens is we have an inflammatory response that occurs where the body says, okay, I see all these things coming in, but we don't quite mesh because this is cow milk and I'm a human. So there's a little bit of a degree of inflammation that occurs. Now, is this bad? I mean, to some degree, yes. I wouldn't be too, too concerned about it over the long haul, but the reality is if you're doing it a lot, it does become something that slows down your progress. So it's just something to be aware of. But we have to look at with whey is when to use it and what it's really all about. You see, when we are making cheese, right? When someone's making cheese, what's happening is they're adding heat to sort of like milk, right? They're adding heat to it and then adding enzymes. And this is causing what's called a coagulation of the different uh, liquids and the different components of milk. That's how cheese is made. What ends up happening is what's left over is ultimately the whey. Okay, so the whey ends up being the liquid substance that ends up being dried. So you can see it's still a heavy part of milk, but what ends up happening is when you're left with that, you're left with a high amount of leucine. And leucine is the amino acid that is in protein that truly does turn on muscle building, but it's also very insulin spiking. Now what that means is that leucine is something that although it's good for building muscle, it can slow down your fat loss because it spikes your insulin. So insulin's the same kind of thing that spikes whenever you eat carbohydrates, right? Now believe it or not, whey protein absorbs so fast and there's so much leucine in it that it spikes your insulin. So this ends up meaning that you really only wanna use whey protein when you can really be in control because every time you spike your insulin, you turn off fat loss. So you don't wanna be consuming whey protein throughout the course of the day. You wanna consume it like right after a workout or possibly right when you break a fast, but taking into consideration, that's also not the best time to be absorbing inflammatory components, right? So you just wanna use it in moderation. But there's an interesting study. The Journal of Nutrition and Metabolism published a study that found that literally consuming whey protein triggered a higher insulin response than consuming white bread. Literally, higher than white bread, which is about as high glycemic as we could possibly think. There was a 1.2 to 2.8x increase in plasma leucine levels. 
Okay? That's huge. That's really big. That means that we almost tripled or could have tripled the amount of bioavailable leucine in our bodies, which means that we're in a prime position to build muscle, but it's also spiking our insulin sky high and stopping fat loss in its tracks. Okay? So just keep that in mind. If you're someone that has a whey protein shake throughout the course of the day, you want to stop doing that. Okay? You want to limit your whey protein to like once a day or once every other day. And honestly, there's other options available if you really wanted to. But let's go ahead and let's dive into the next one, which is going to be casein protein. Okay, casein protein has long been touted as the protein that you want to have in the evening time because it digests slowly, right? So remember when I was describing the manufacturing or the creation of whey, okay, so, or the creation of cheese rather, when you're creating cheese, you're adding enzymes and it's starting the coagulation process. Perfect example of this is cottage cheese. Like cottage cheese is midway between becoming cheese. So you have a little bit of whey, but you have a good amount of casein. Like old school bodybuilders and stuff like that, they'll always say like, eat cottage cheese at night because it's high in casein protein. So a couple things, casein protein does digest slow, okay? It gelatinizes within your gut. Uh, but I have to say, out of all the proteins that I'm gonna talk about today, like casein is the one that you probably should just avoid. Casein is very hard to digest. It's very hard in the digestive system. But more importantly, those casein proteins, when they hit your mouth, they turn into something known as casomorphins, okay? And these casomorphins actually affect opioid receptors in our brain. So this is a real deal thing. They affect opioid receptors and have literally a morphine-like response as far as addiction goes. So we become very addicted to these things and they're very inflammatory. So we get addicted to the casein protein. Now we may not even realize this physical addiction, but the reality is what it's doing to our neurotransmitter function, it's making us have cravings. It's causing issues. I've never seen someone build an amazing physique or lose a bunch of weight relying on casein protein. It's just plain old dirty protein that's hard to digest you're much better off with some other options. And I'll talk about how you can combine some certain things to get a better option to have at night. If you must do casein protein, honestly, get it from a whole food source, get it from cottage cheese rather than getting it from a casein powdered protein. That leads me into my next protein I wanna talk about, which is pea protein, okay? Those of you that watch my channel know I'm a fan of pea protein, but I wanna explain why it works, but I also wanna explain where it works. Because it's not the same as whey, I don't necessarily think that it needs to be a replacement for whey, I think it's a value add to your life and to your training and eating regimen. You see, pea protein is a plant protein, and most plant proteins don't have the plethora of amino acids that we need to really be a complete protein. The cool thing is, pea protein's a little bit of an exception. Now, it is lacking a bit in methionine, but you can always add that in with hemp. I can talk about that in a little bit. The reality is pea protein digests in a really great way. And it has what are called galactose oligosaccharides, which are really powerful prebiotics. So you're actually getting a digestive benefit with using pea protein. So what happens when you're making pea protein is it's actually a mechanical separation of yellow peas. So whereas whey protein can be a chemical and other proteins can be a chemical separation, it's a purely mechanical separation, they're basically breaking open yellow peas and ultimately getting the protein out of it. So it's a pretty gentle process that doesn't add a lot of byproducts or have a lot of adulteration. So pea protein is really solid when you're just using it as a meal replacement or spread out throughout the day. It also works really well post-workout, but it doesn't absorb quite as fast as whey. But when it comes down to consistent use and meal replacement, pea protein bar none is the way to go. So here's an actual study that was published that found that with newbies, people that were just getting started, pea protein actually elicited a better response than whey when it came down to actually muscle building and muscle recovery. So this study was published in the journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Took a look at 161 participants. It was a good size study, okay? And it had these participants either consume 25 grams of whey protein twice a day, 25 grams of pea protein twice a day, or a placebo for 12 weeks, okay? Here's what's really cool. They found at the end of the study when they actually measured bicep thickness, they actually, they just isolated one muscle because it makes it easier. They found that there was a 20% increase in muscle thickness in the pea protein group. 15.6% muscle increase in the whey protein group, and an 8% increase in the placebo group, okay? That's in newbies, so that's people that are just starting out. So the reason that they think that pea protein elicited a better muscle growth response and recovery was simply because it digested slower in a more controlled way. So people that are just getting started especially, they need to have a long tail recovery that's feeding them some protein. We don't wanna do that with casein for the obvious reasons that I stated before. So pea protein's a really good solid way to do that. So if you wanted to consume a type of protein that would be good before bed, pea protein would ideally be it. And if you wanted to slow down the digestion, you could add some almond butter. So literally take a tablespoon of almond butter along with pea protein and you're in shape. If you did that with whey protein, it would go straight to fat because you spike your insulin 
okay, with the whey protein, big insulin spike, and then you added almond butter to try to slow it down, no, that almond butter is gonna go to storage because you just spiked your insulin, so the cells are opened up. You want a slower protein that doesn't spike your insulin along with a little fat. So pea protein is ideal before bed. Now, also, those of you that know my channel know that Sun Warrior is a big sponsor, but Sun Warrior also has literally what I would call the most complete pea protein blend because they actually have pea protein and then they put hemp in there to get that missing methionine. So they've got this thing called the Warrior Blend. It has a little bit of MCT in it, a little bit of coconut fat in it, so it's actually perfect before bed. So I talk about it in other videos, but I always have a special discount for those of you that are watching my channel. So if you're interested in getting pea protein into your life and into your regime, Honestly, this would be the best opportunity to take advantage of getting this stuff because you're gonna get it a lot cheaper in the link down in the description than you ever would in the store or ever would online in any other place. So big thanks to Sun Warrior and their awesome pea protein. Make sure you check it out down below. All right, now let's move on to collagen. Here's the thing, collagen is big right now. Everyone's talking about collagen simply because I think the keto craze made it popular. Okay, the reality is collagen is good, we need it but it's not there for muscle building, okay? It is in some ways. You see, collagen is all about hair, skin, nails, tendons, and repairing the little bits of soft connective tissue in between our muscle fibers. So what happens when we break muscle down, we tear muscle fibers, but we tear the collagen and tear down the little binding pieces between the muscle fibers. So collagen is critical to actually repair and recover a muscle, but not necessarily grow it. There was actually a study that was published in the journal Europe PMC that found that plasma levels of collagen were elevated for three weeks after muscle damage. What that tells us is that collagen synthesis became really important. The body upregulated collagen because it was clearly part of the healing process. So if we don't heal, then we can't recover. So collagen doesn't have to be right after your workout, anything like that. I recommend, honestly, just having collagen with your coffee or something. Make it simple, don't make it a meal replacement, don't make it anything, make it something simple. Add it to your coffee, just get it in there if you're training at a really high intensity or if you feel like you're getting a little more sore. Okay, we haven't completely connected the dots with soreness and the overall recovery side of things and how that works. Soreness doesn't always equal a good workout. I've talked about that in other videos. The reality is collagen is good for just overall recovery, but also for hair, skin, and nails simply because of the amino acids that are there. Okay, let's talk really quick on rice protein for a second. Okay, rice protein is not a complete protein. Okay, so if you're doing any kind of vegan or vegetarian protein, avoid the rice protein. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good. It's highly deficient in lysine, and that's very important to overall complete amino acid profiles. But the bigger issue is what are called prolamins. Okay, so rice is a grain and grains have proteins in them, obviously. This is why it's a rice protein. But these prolamins can actually trigger a cross-reaction similar to what gluten would do. So those of you that know me know that I'm not a fan of gluten, okay? I've seen enough research to know that gluten is bad when it comes down to the modern human because we have evolved to a point where we don't process gluten. The issue is there's a cross pathway that causes the proteins in grains to trigger the same sort of autoimmune reaction that would occur with gluten. So what that means is your body sends a super heightened immune response to neutralize the prolamins, the proteins, that are coming in from rice and grains. Now, a little bit of rice, a little bit of grains is fine, but when you're talking rice protein, you're talking crazy concentrated amounts of this. Okay, not something you wanna be relying on, especially after a workout when you're super, uh, you're, you're in a state where you're gonna absorb everything, right? That's not what you wanna be doing, especially at the end of a fast. So honestly, scrap the rice protein unless you absolutely can't do pee, but it really doesn't have a place at all. Okay, hemp protein is really solid, but hemp protein is something that you wanna to add to your pea protein. So you always do a pea and hemp mix. Sun Warrior already combines them, so that's great. So hemp protein, a lot of people ask about that. Strong anti-inflammatory effects. And there's one thing I wanna add before I wrap up this video, this is very important. Don't go out and buy beef hydrolyzed protein, okay? That stuff is garbage, that is not even real. Okay, so there's companies out there, I'm not gonna name names, but the reality is these animal-based proteins, these beef proteins, all they do is they take byproducts of butchering, like they take like, uh, they take uh, tendons, ligaments, things like that, like literally hooves and stuff like that. So incomplete, weird proteins, collagen proteins, and then they just add amino acids to them so that the label shows that it's full protein. That's a waste of money. And then they'll charge like $60, $70 for a jug of this stuff because it's like pure from beef. Like they squeezed a steak and all the protein came out of it. That's not how this works at all. Okay, so that's total garbage. So don't even waste your money there. Okay, so whey protein post-workout, whey protein uh, when you break a fast, if you know that dairy is not an issue for you. I would never do that personally. Okay, so um, whey protein concentrate out the window, whey protein isolate is definitely the way you wanna go in that case. 
pea protein as your general baseline, okay? Meal replacement with meals to add protein before bed. That's something that you'd be consuming a few times per day, whereas whey protein might just be one time per day or once every other day on a workout day. Okay, then casein protein, just disregard unless you're eating cottage cheese and which still organic so that you're not getting all the garbage. Okay, then collagen, just with your coffee. Okay, no strategic method to it or timing with it. Maybe upregulate it a little bit, increase it when you're extra sore. Okay, then rice protein, throw it away, beef protein, make fun of them. And then when it comes down to hemp protein, realistically, you wanna be combining it with pea anyway, but still good stuff for the most part. I hope that this gave you some solid answers. And again, thank you to Sun Warrior for offering all my viewers and fans a discount down below in the description. Couldn't do this stuff without you guys. So thank you all very much. If you have comments, put them down below. See you soon.